Hey campers, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today we're out in, where are we at? Whiskey Creek Beach, which is just north of Joyce, out on the Olympic Peninsula. And uh, that's Canada back there. There's a glare. Oh, there it is. Hey Canada, I see your beauty. And uh, so today what we're working on, what we have on the menu for you today is a Suburban P40 furnace. Now that's a 120 volt furnace. And as a 120 volt furnace, it needs uh, to drop its control voltage down to about 20, maybe 30 volts DC, it might be 24 volts DC, somewhere in that region. And uh, let me take you inside and show you what we've got going on with this particular furnace. It's making a lot of buzzing noises, which would be a transformer, but let's, uh, let's let you listen to that and uh, we'll take you on the journey to get it fixed. So this is a park model. Uh, I don't even know if they call it an RV, but it's a park model. And there's your main bed, and let me be quiet and let you listen to this buzzing sound coming from in here. Right in the bedroom. So I've taken these screws off. And there's our Suburban P40, and I've even taken these screws off. Oh my gosh, it's even louder. Yeah. And here is our legend. You know me, you got to get the model number and the part number. Uh, the model number and the serial number. So if we can... There you go, you got a P40 and the serial number. You're going to need to know both of the serial number and the model number if you ever work on these things uh, for parts and things like that. Now inside of this is going to be a transformer and we're going to learn all about those as we develop this uh, repair. Now let me prove that it is in fact the furnace making all this noise because I'm basically going to unplug it and just like that it's quiet. Now back up in that area, we have the uh, gas valve. We're going to have to disconnect that gas valve there. And um, and then there's going to be a screw right there and a screw right there. Okay. And uh, on the outside, there's going to be an exhaust port we'll need to remove. And by taking these two screws, the gas valve and the exhaust port off, this whole assembly will come out of this hole. We're hoping. <laughs> now, um, the other way... Uh, to get this out is if you look in there So here's the screw we're gonna be taking out, but there's another screw farther in if you take this screw out And there's another there's another one right there this screw and that screw um, Then you might need to fight a little bit with the gas with the LP line But uh, those two screws there then then the case will stay but the furnace will slide out so if you're in a situation um you know, you could just take the, 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 the business end out and leave the carcass, if you will. Um, now, that works great if you can gain access to the, the LP side. But as you see, I don't have a whole lot of room here to get to the valve down. I've already looked at this. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the whole case out and work on it out here on the floor. Now, whenever you're working on one of these flare fittings, it is important um, that you use a backup wrench. This one was particularly tight or stubborn, or so I had to use this one to get the nut, and um, I used a pair of channel locks to grab the body of the valve. So whenever you're working with flares, it is critically important that you use a backup wrench. If had I not used a backup wrench, then this whole valve body would have spun, and it may have even um, bent off the, uh, the copper tubing down there. And um, then I've got another repair to do. So rule of thumb, no, not a rule of thumb. Darren's law, whenever you're working with flare fittings, always, always, always use a backup wrench. No matter how inconvenient that might be, use a backup wrench, okay? On the outside, you just uh, take the screws loose here, and then you might need to, to work a little bit at some of that butyl tape. But then this, this just slides right out. And then you have this one as well that comes out. So now we've... We free, this is the back end of the furnace. But if you don't take this backside out, then you're going to be trying to align that furnace with these holes. And that's kind of difficult to do. So six screws and a little bit of poo-poo tape there, or you can call it poo-poo tape, butyl tape, then um, it's easy to get the furnace in and you can position it. Um, so the best practice just to take, take these off. Um, and while you're on the backside, you can service the seal, make sure that the seal's good. When you take these furnaces out, you really want to be careful of this gasket that's down underneath. If I just try to drag this out, I'm going to destroy that gasket. So you need to kind of lift up on your furnace. So I've just kind of lifted up on it. And with it lifted up, you want to carefully pull that gasket out um, so you don't damage it. And then um, once that gasket's free there, then you can get your furnace out. But don't 
hurt that, okay? Or you'll be buying another one. Okay, we've got the furnace removed. We've turned it on its head. And if you look down in there, that little yellow thing, that's the transformer that we're going to have to fish out of there. Okay, so there we go. That's, that's what we're going to be getting out. That's the thing that's making all the noise. Now, to get to that, we're going to flip it back over. I just wanted to show you that. We're going to flip this whole furnace back over, and then we'll, we'll take the carcass out like we were talking about. That's how we're going to gain access to that. Here's what I was talking about with taking out just the, the, the guts of this thing. This um, LP line is going to prevent that. So we need to take this off and then unscrew this right here so that we can clear this wall on the inside. Okay. Um, we might need to do a little bit with the electric. I know these are going to feed through this hole. I'm not sure what's going on in here, so we'll just take this cap off and kind of peek inside of there as well. Now, what I'm going to do, where's my finger? So I want to try to maintain the curve of this because it's going to reconnect. So I'm just going to take a Sharpie and kind of make that profile there. So, so when I reassemble all this, I'm kind of close to where I need to be when I reassemble it. Little trick there for you. With this removed, I took the nut out of here. I looked inside, and it's, it's just got one of those plugs. So we lucked out there. Sometimes you just got to take the wire nuts off, but it was a plug. So with all these sides ready to be pulled out, we take off these two screws, and then this whole inside should slide right out. So here we go. They're just like I said. You clean up the side, take out the two screws, and this slid right out of this. So now we're going to set this off to the side, and then we're going to lay this down, and then we can get to our transformer. Well, we've got this P40 out and on its side. I uh, figured let's do some show and tell. Control board. Now, this control board is a 120 volt variant, not the 12 volt variant. Um, and up here, we have a high limit reset. There's a little push button right there. I've taken a little, one of my old rubber gloves and just covered, this is a gas valve. I don't want any debris to get inside of here. So I've just kind of covered it over gas valve here. This is where the AC connected. Um, this is always handy, schematics. And um, here we are. But we'll be working on this transformer here. And um, it's the thing that's making all the noise. Okay, so uh, let's jump right into that nightmare. And uh, we have a new transformer, so we'll put it on there. Hopefully the newer one is quiet. The procedures on replacing these transformers is just to cut the wires, um, the black, the white, the red, and the brown. The new transformer has, let me stick it there. The new transformer has the same colors on it. So you just match white to white, black to black, red to red, brown to brown, and, and put it in this space right here. And then just strip these wires and um, wire nut them really good. Okay, so we've got the new transformer installed. Okay, uh, black to black, white to white, red to red, brown to brown. We'll put some um, tie wraps on it to kind of keep it tight. Now, what, what does a transformer do? Um, we'll go there for a second. So on a transformer, you have a primary side and a secondary side. And they'll even say that on the, um, uh, you have input, output. But in transformer speak, it's primary and secondary. So this one, I'm going to give it 120 and it's going to give me 24. So let's put them right here. So this side right here, I give it 120 volts. And out of this side, I get 24 volts. And the way it does that is there's, this is a solid core. And then there's, there's wires that are wound um, different lengths and different diameter on one side, on the primary side, different lengths, different diameter on the secondary side. And through induction, the wires never really touch, but they're induced. So as I create this uh, electromagnetic spinning, if you will, on the primary, I'm spinning. It's kind of like a gear or a ratio, like on your bicycle. So I'm going to give it a bigger input. and It's going to give me a smaller output. Um, so that's kind of what's going on in these things. There's no moving parts. It's all done in electromotive force. And uh, this is the thing that's producing all the noise. And the reason it's producing noise is somewhere in here, there's a misalignment of the windings somewhere. And what you're hearing is the electrons getting excited as they're trying to um, jump. You hear that on a lot of magnetic coils, whether it's a, a motor starter or uh, a transformer. So they always give this buzz if there's just a slightest misalignment of the wire windings inside of these things. So this is the brand new one and we're gonna plug it in. We're gonna, we're gonna plug it in right here right now. We're gonna hope that this one's quieter, okay? 
Okay, the operation was a success. If I, um, this wire here, red with white stripe on these furnaces, is going to have the 24 volts going to the thermostat, and the thermostat's going to open and close based on temperature, and then when that thermostat open and closes, it comes back on this wire, which is just a solid white wire. So these two wires leaving the furnace, these were the white wires that had the knot tied in them. Um, one is going to give me the 24 volts out, and then it's going to go to a wall thermostat and then come back on this wire starting the furnace. So if I connect these two together, the furnace will try to start. Um, so the question is, I don't hear any buzzing. It is totally silent in here now. So if I ground my thing, look, there's my... Um, it's 29 volts, but uh, the new transformer has basically silenced the job. So we've confirmed that the um, the new transformer has fixed the problem. The old transformer was the thing making all the noise. And um, so now what we do is we put everything back together and do a test fire. Okay, we've got everything reassembled down in here. We put some rector seal number five. I believe they had Teflon. It was white. Rector seal is kind of this yellow. It doesn't uh, uh, break down in, in gas. So uh, whenever I work with LP, I always use the rector seal number five, which is a yellow compound. And when you do a flare fitting, you never use any Teflon or anything here. It's just uh, the flare is it's a is the only thing inside of there. And then here you can see my alignment with my Sharpie. So I know that when I slide this back into its hole here, that that copper is gonna kind of align pretty closely to where my valve is gonna be here. And we've got our knot put back in here. We've reassembled this. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a shop vac and kind of clean up some of that for the customer, some of that debris here. And then um, we'll slide this back inside, raise it up, slide our foam piece, which is intact over there. Um, and um, We'll put this in, and then on the outside, we'll go ahead and clean up the butyl tape that's on the outside of the wall there, put new butyl tape on, and um, reassemble this, turn on the gas, and fire it up, and um, I'm expecting good results here. So that's what we have next on our on our menu. Okay, here we go on the outside. We've got our, our exhaust port on. We put new butyl tape back behind, make a nice watertight seal here. Uh, the other one wasn't as sealed, so ours is a little bit better. Um, I feel, <laughs> but uh, anyway, make a little puppet show wherever. Okay, enough on that. Let's get back to work. Okay, so now we're going to go inside. We've got everything buttoned up. Let's do a test fire. We've got the outside um, exhaust buttoned up. We've put our, our gasket down here. We've reconnected our gas valve. We've got the gas turned on. And whenever you work with gas, you do need to sniff for leaks or check for leaks. Uh, I've got this gadget here. It's ready to go, and um, so you put the business end around here, and if he detects gas, you'll see it on the display. It'll show up as, as red, um, and I'm not seeing that, so that means that our flare connection is, is good. And um, so now what we'll do is we'll connect. When I put these splices on, I use a male and a female, um, and doing it that way, some manufacturers' thermostats, it matters if they get fed 12 volts, like for example, a Coleman thermostat on the wall is fed from the furnace um, on like a typical RV scenario. So we need to make sure that we feed 24 volts. So in that instance, these wires and this polarity does matter. But in this instance, I don't know what the thermostat is. It really doesn't matter to me, but I've got a female and a male. So it's idiot proof. So this end here goes into the wall, into the rest of the coach. And then you've got your your male and female connectors. So one of the benefits, not only does it make it idiot proof, but it can also connect these two here and get this furnace to fire up. So let's do that next and get the furnace to start. So by connecting these two wires, we know that it's working. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it now, okay? And um, the, the operation here was successful because if I'm quiet, I do not hear that buzz that we started with. So let's just listen. No buzzing. So the, the, the problem all along was that transformer right there. So um, we have a successful operation. So uh, we'll finish this up. I'm going to go ahead and button this up. We'll, tire, we'll fire it up, make sure that we're getting heat, and then we'll, uh, we'll close up this video. Okay, so I basically put the cover on. We're going to listen for a click, which is going to be the gas. It's doing a pre-purge right now. It's getting all the combustibles out of... There's our click. Now, because we've had this gas valve disconnected, don't be surprised if it takes two, three, maybe four times for the furnace to start up 
um, because there's air in the line. Um, sometimes it fires off right on the first shot. So uh, what I like to do is go outside and feel the exhaust coming out and uh, that'll confirm to me that the furnace is in fact working. Um, I, just, I think I heard a click and I think I heard a wolf sound, so that, that flame sound. So that's what I think what I'm hearing. So let's go outside and check the exhaust ports to make sure we have some heat out there. Okay, we definitely have some some hot whew, some hot air coming out of there. So we know the furnace is working. And um, let's go inside and button it up. Okay, so here we are at the end of the trail. We started with the real buzzy transformer and we went through all the steps necessary to get that changed out and um, you know, taking the whole thing apart. So we really hope these videos are very helpful to you. If you do find value in these, please subscribe. It helps us out. And um, we're putting out new videos about every week or so, where most of the service calls I go on, we're putting them out. So we're gonna basically put the screen on here and we've got a couple other customers to get to today. So we'll be on our way. Happy Camper St. Meyer Works. This is Darren signing off.